Hi folks, this is the uh, first of three videos that uh, are going to review some basic grade 9 chemistry concepts that we're going to be using straight away in the uh, grade 10 course. And the first one will be on the periodic table of elements. So we want to take a look at the information that we can get by looking at a periodic table. This is actually the one from your textbook, just a black and white version of it, so we don't have the colors that might represent the uh, uh, metals and metalloids and non-metals. Um, but what I really want to focus on is two of the main structures in the periodic table. And there's quite a few structures in here, but I want to focus on the groups, okay, which are represented by the columns in the periodic table and the periods, which are represented by the rows. Okay. And uh, both of these are related to the uh, electrons that we find uh, around the uh, nucleus of an atom. Okay, so if we start with the periods, period here tells us in which electron shell uh, you're going to find the outer electrons. Okay, so here in row one or period one, uh, the outer electron shell is actually the first shell where you can fit up to two electrons. So this would have one electron, this would have two. Then you start over again on the second row and here the outer electrons are found on the uh, in the second shell okay till you fill up the second shell which can hold eight so two in the first shell eight in the second shell up to eight in total and then you start over again these outer electrons are found on the third shell okay uh, then you've got the columns which form the groups and uh, they will all have some similar features to each other some similar characteristics based on the fact that these as an example would all have one electron in the outer shell and these would all have two electrons in the outer shell okay so these are the two main structures that we're going to be talking about um, with regards to uh, these elements okay now let's take a look at what information we get in each box so let me just move this down a bit so we can get a better view Okay, so you see some letters, some words, some numbers. Let's just do a little quick review as to what these mean. So you've got the symbol that represents the uh, element and its name. Okay, and then up above you've got the atomic number. And this tells you the number of protons and electrons um, in an atom. Okay. Uh, so here this says that there's 22 protons in the nucleus and then uh, 22 electrons in the electron shells. Okay, next we have atomic mass. And most of the mass in uh, an atom comes from the protons and neutrons in the, um, in the nucleus. So this number here essentially is the sum of the uh, protons and neutrons. Okay, so for example, if we look at beryllium, we see that this number here tells us that there's four protons, and since the atomic mass is nine, nine minus four, there must be five uh, neutrons in the nucleus. Now, sometimes you'll see a number that doesn't seem quite exact. That's because, and again, I think you would have seen that last year, that sometimes there's different versions or isotopes of these elements. Okay, they may have more or less neutrons in their um, in their um, in their nuclei. So here this essentially represents an average. So because 6.9 very close to 7, chances are that, you know, uh, it means that the most common form of lithium uh, will have four neutrons. 3 plus 4 is 7. Okay, but there's a certain percentage that would have less which skews the atomic mass since this is an, av an average. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll sort of always round to the most common form. Okay, the last thing we have here is the ion charge. Okay, so here if you take, uh, say, elements in the first column, okay, the first group, uh, there's one electron in its outermost shell, uh, and so it's easy for these atoms to lose an electron. Okay, so if they lose an electron to become a lithium ion, say, well, then the charge will be positive one because you're losing one of the negative charges. Okay, whereas an element like beryllium is likely to lose the two electrons in its outer shell, so the net charge would end up being 
positive 2, since there's two less negative electrons. Okay, And you do have a few, like the one in this example here, titanium, that can form different types of ions. Okay, And we'll see later on when we talk about molecules and compounds how this is going to become important. Okay, So these are the basic uh, elements, so to speak, or the basic characteristics that uh, we're going to start looking at that we can get from the periodic table. Okay, So please go to the second video.